Section 743 covers the Cologne gauge and the Lorentz gauge. Um, the Cologne gauge is, is kind of your first guess of what would be a good gauge to use. Um, since we had a lot of success with a divergentless A vector field, um, we can just pick that for the Cologne gauge, A is equal, the divergence of A is equal to zero. And so when we plug this into this monster equation that we had before here, this term becomes zero. And so we only have the gradient, I'm sorry, the gradient of the time derivative of V of T equal to mu naught J. And let me double check here. When we plug it into Gauss's equation, where did that go? That was up here. Tisk tisk. Where'd my orange marker go? There he is. Okay. When we plug that into Gauss's equation using the vector potentials, we get that the Laplacian of V is equal to minus one over epsilon naught rho. And here we are, we looks like this looks like the magnetostatic, the electrostatic case again with the Coulomb gauge. And indeed the Coulomb gauge works great for these cases where you don't have any time dependence. But that's not the problem we're usually trying to solve when we use electrodynamics in the first place. Um, so, um, all right. The thing is, is, um, the Coulomb gauge is deceptive. And one of the reasons why it's deceptive is, let's suppose you were sitting on the moon. I'm using the example from the book here. You're sitting on the moon and somebody in a laboratory on earth moved some of the charges around, okay? This equation says that the potential everywhere in the universe is determined by the charge configuration, okay? So you should be able to, at least, you know, your, your naive thought is that, you know, sitting there on the moon, you should be able to detect those charges move instantaneously, ignoring the speed of light, which we know isn't correct. The reason why it doesn't work that way is because the electric field, let's go back to our formula here, the electric field depends not only on the gradient of V, but on the time derivative of A, okay? So when you start moving charges around, there's an A vector field that propagates to cancel out um, um, the change in the V vector. And that A vector actually becomes very complicated to calculate, okay? So um, the pro that's the problem, is, is when you go to solve for the A vector given some current distribution here, only one of these terms drops out that becomes zero. This thing is still a mess. It's not easy to solve. And so it's not, it's not a fun gauge system to use when you have moving charges. For static charges, it's great. It's perfect. It's what we did all, all along. So that's all I really have to say on clone gauge. Next, we're going to cover the Lorentz gauge. Thanks for your time.